Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Italian Podcast. My name is Jose Quintero, and if you're listening to this, you're interested in money and finance, and that is why we still have with us Eddie the Hustler. <laughs> Eddie the Hustler. I know yeah. she probably I'm like, I should probably have, I should be more enthusiastic about my name or something. I'm just like, Eddie the Hustler. <laughs> nah, bro. Well, welcome back. I'm so excited that we're still having this conversation about money because it's, I feel like we've been really educating uh, the, the, the Raza, the community, and we've been getting really good feedback. If you haven't listened to the other episodes, there's three episodes that we've recorded that are uh, on finance and, and money, so go check them out. We did a general overview about money. We went into investing, we went into banks, and this time around we're going to be talking about student loans and we're going to be talking about how to, how can you actually make money. We already gave you the mindset aspect of it. Yeah. We gave you how you can invest your money. We gave you different banks that you can be using, but now how do I actually make money? Yeah. All right? So, nine to five. You yeah. have a saying for this. Yeah, so on this one right here, um, you know, your nine to five is for your bills. But your five to nine is basically what's going to fund your future, right? And basically what I'm saying, um, trying to convey there is that, you know, use your job as a tool, right? The money that you make from there, um, use it, pay your bills, but also leverage that to learn skills, develop yourself, find out how they do things. That way, outside of your job, right, the five to nine that's going to fund your future you invest that time to make more money, right? Side hustles. Are you telling me that I should become a business person? Um, I think becoming an entrepreneur or like starting your own business, it's not for everyone, but investing is, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot more that goes into it as far as like a business, right? Especially if you're, you know, trying to get, um, you know, all the documents, if you have employees, like there's a lot of stuff, business plans. It's, it, it's, an, it's another, you know, Discussion. Yeah, so finding different ways to make money. And so many people are listening like, hey, I used to be an entrepreneur myself. And yeah, I'm selling chocolates at school. <laughs> yeah, that was me, bro. You I used know? to do that. You carried your backpack, you carried your M&Ms, your Twix, and you knew that these were high value treats because the school wasn't selling yeah. them. So you sold them even at a premium. You bought your box of chocolate at Costco yeah. and you started hustling. Yeah, Exactly. And it's so funny because now that I think about it in retrospect, when we sold candy for like school trips and whatnot, we were keeping the mm -hmm. money, even though we were like, whoa, one almond chocolate bar was like a dollar fifty. Yeah. The people who kept that was the school. Yeah. They were making profits off of us and we didn't even know. But once we started doing it on our own, I mean, obviously, if you got caught, you got reprimanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but trying to not to get caught with these side hustles. Yeah. And by being caught is like you know, Uncle Sam always wants a cut of your money. Yep, that's why I give. If you get paid in cash, put it in your pocket. Nothing happy. That's the only uh, way I'm ever using that one, and I don't care if Uncle Sam sees this because you take too much of my money away. Oh, yeah. uh, flipper. <laughs> but yes, so many people probably get paid cash and if you get paid cash, you obviously don't report it. So you're actually keeping more money in your pocket. Unfortunately, if you do want to make cash uh, legally and decide to do like rideshare apps like Uber Eats, DoorDash, uh, Uber or, or Lyft, you are going to have to report a W-9. But that is one way to earn more cash. Yeah. So, I mean, again, outside of your job, you want to invest some of that time to make more money and with that extra money you want to use that to either invest it right into the stocks save it into the, like the banks that we discuss because at the end of the day investing and having your money right right having your money um in order you need to have money at the end of the day a lot of people say like oh i don't have money to invest or you don't need that much this and that right but in reality is you you need some type of cash and if you're living you know check to check and you're struggling financially like ding i honestly don't have any money to invest that's where you have to use the time outside of you know your job that way you could pay off your your bills i mean uh pay off debt invest do all that extra stuff yeah so uh, people that I need to shout out because I always, uh, I don't want to say look down on because obviously you're so much indoctrinated to uh, go to school, get a career yeah. and all this other stuff that 
when like a lot of my friends in high school who were graduating and they became barbers, you're like, oh, that's not a career, yada, yada, yada. Little did we know that we were the stupid ones because- Yeah, bro. It, like I should have learned that skill. So many people in college were cutting hair in the dorms because they already knew what they taught themselves or they, they were just making money because one day yeah. they didn't have to report it. Two people need haircuts. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like being. My mom always said, "En la vida siempre va a haber doctor, va a haber enfermos, uh, so become a nurse or a doctor." But in this life, everybody's gonna need a haircut. Yeah, exactly. Especially during COVID, everyone was like, "Well, at least me, I was trying to find a barber. Like, dang, I need to get my haircut, it's right?" Now. Yeah, now it's like crazy, and I get my haircut every week, so I'm yeah. I'm paying like sixty bucks every week. You're sixty bucks. Yeah, I appreciate I, well, now that I'm letting it grow out a little bit, I'm paying because uh, I only do like the beard every two weeks. Oh yeah. And I'm paying yeah. thirty. So I mean, thirty bucks. Yeah. 30, every two weeks, so sixty bucks a month. Yeah. Which is still like a lot. So many people are like, "Damn, that's a lot." Like, why don't you yeah. learn how to cut it yourself? And I'm like, "Well, that's a skill that I don't have time for. Yeah. And don't want to learn right now." Right. Yeah. So even all the all that stuff, I think learning a trade or, or a skill or something that you can, uh, you know, apply or start using today, that's a great way to make money, especially as a as a side hustle. And then kind of to piggyback off that if you feel like dang i don't want to you know cut hair or i don't want to i don't know do nails whatever it is you could actually flip stuff that's one thing that i used to do i used to i used to take my lady with me we used to go to ross burlington tj maxx and i used to go to the shoes the men's and the women's section i would pick up like because they always have like nikes or some adidas i'll pick yeah. them up sometimes jordans and i would uh enter the the product number that they have like on the nike when you look oh, at the so tag yeah, they, they have it right there. And I would, before I would buy it, I would go on eBay and I would look at, like, did this one sell? And it's like, oh, shoot, yeah, it did sell. They sold 10 of them in the last month. Uh -huh. So I'll grab it. I'll look at the price. I'll do the math. Like, okay, how much is it going to cost me with tax and everything? And then I'll buy it. And then I'll go home, post pictures, and then I'll flip it. Then how much were you making profit? Uh, I remember, man, I, like, there was, this one's crazy. I remember I went to the Nike store one time. And, you know, the outlets, they have them with the caja and everything. Yeah. So on this one, I made a pretty, pretty good chuck and change. Went to a Nike outlet and I found like probably like f five or six pairs of LeBrons. Mm. And I sold those on StockX, right? So before I even got it, I checked the, um, the, serial, number and the serial number and then I checked like if they were selling and things like that. And when I went, I saw that a bunch of them were selling. So I bought them and I sold all of them before I even bought them. So I bought them. Uh, after that, I sold them and then I bought them and I made at least like 600 bucks, 700 bucks at the time. I'm like, dang, that's just in one day. That's just, uh, yeah. And it, again, it, and you put them on, on what? On StockX. Did you, did you have to report that or? Uh, I didn't report it. I didn't get nothing. No, no form, no nothing. Cause technically you're, you're reselling it. So, I mean, it's like a used good. Um, so, I mean, it's like you buy a used car and then you sell it on a private market it's already been used. There's no yeah, taxes yeah, on that. And that's awesome. So I want to take it back to like people who actually went to school or people who have a skill in something, look at what you do for work and see how you can do that off to the side. Some companies allow it. Some companies don't even need to know that you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Just sure. FYI. For example, for uh, like me who I work in radio, right? And do, you know, podcast right if you ever want to sponsor the podcast please let me know, know. we, need, we need like a, a drink right here i know we need something Come in the on. background like hey yo what are you drinking i'm not going to show you because yeah. i'm not getting paid for it like it out rip <laughs> off the label <laughs> exactly but that is one way to uh, make money even though i work in radio i have my stable income there if i did this podcast which i do and a sponsor wanted to come in like that's one yeah. way of doing income commercials if i need to get paid via social media and a company reaches out which they have then that's a, uh, a different way to make income obviously because it's another company reaching out to me they'll probably w9 me and unfortunately uncle sam will take my money yeah <laughs> but it i don't know so many people like i have friends who are engineers and who do uh, like plans for ADU buildings yeah. on the side, and there you have they're already working for a business, right? Yeah, and I think like if you're already making, you have your job and everything, and then on top of that you have something on the side that's bringing in more income, you can get to like 
financial freedom a lot faster and or in a good financial place right because at the end of the day uh we all want to have the ability to do whatever we want when we want for as long as we want right and not have like money be an issue i'm pretty sure everyone would like to just stay home watch netflix and still be collecting money Mm -hmm. but in order to to get to that point you have to invest the time outside of your job right and that's so hard for a lot of people yeah because even for myself and i'm like fuck you're tired yeah i should probably drive uber on the weekends or i should you know because i have student loans and i want to pay them down and um some people degrade like ride share but they make good uh, no, money yeah. and a value that i found out for the people who are extroverts and uh, and love driving i'm one of them that's why i considered doing uber or, yeah. or lyft the knowledge that you'll get from all the people that you meet. oh that's true because you had really a conversation com- yeah, yeah yeah i remember that you were telling me good conversations like just the other day i went to a concert and i was coming back and our our Uber driver was like uh, 75 years old, which I always find it interesting, not in a judgmental way, like why is a 75 year old yeah. driving? Like what does he have to work for? But it's sort of like the the psychology, we talked yeah. about the psychology of money that has led him and what is he still trying to pay off? A lot of people who are that age and I've noticed when they retire their normal nine to five, they still need a sense of purpose and they still yeah. need a sense of community. So driving Uber and Lyft That's for true. them is a sense of community because you're constantly meeting new people. Mm-hmm. So on that aspect, I've had those types of conversations. For this person, because, and he was a talker, so I was like, oh, let's see what I can learn from it. Because yeah. there's always, as a, as a person who rides Uber, like what value can I get from the driver? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what's their story? What is their why? So I remember he's like, oh, Rancho Cucamonga, I've been living here since the 70s. So my head, 70s, compound interest, huh. uh, real estate, like, yeah. oh, I wonder why you're doing Uber type of stuff. But then he explained, like, in the 70s, he bought a condo. In the 90s, he sold it and bought a house. And I'm like, well, that was 40 years ago. Do you own your house? And he's like, no, we refinanced it a couple of times. Obviously, I didn't get too into, like, what you use the money for? Yeah, yeah. But uh, he was telling me how he was doing. He, he also invests in stocks. And I was just like, ooh, that's, you know, like. Yeah. Well, my what, time to shine. Yeah, like, what, what are you investing in? Like, let's see, let's see if we're investing in similar things. Like, share your portfolio. I'll show you mind you show me yeah. yours, right? <laughs> and he basically like yo i invest in this i sold this i just did this and we had similar stocks and i was just like it, it was also gratifying because i see him as a i saw him at the moment as like wow he's got knowledge and wisdom and to know that i'm investing in similar things it makes me believe that i'm on the right track yeah uh, you know because he's in, and he has a lot of money invested he just chooses not to pay for his mortgage because mm. it's a tax advantage. Yeah. And there's so many. And that's why I was like, oh. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff you won't know until you, like, you expose yourself. And then that too, expose yourself, right? I think that's a good point, though. Talk to everybody. That's why I always tell everyone is like, hey, you never know what people know, especially the when they're older, right? They have so much experience and knowledge, especially when it comes to money. You could either learn like, hey, this is where I messed up. This is what you should do. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of knowledge out there and all these side hustles and, you know, uh, things that you can do on the side. You never know who you're going to run into. Yeah. Mowing lawn is a side hustle and that gives you cash and cash is king because you're not getting taxed on it. So find something. Literally, I know everybody in every podcast, every video or every Instagram reel says find a side hustle. Literally find what you like. You never know what you can be flipping. My, My brother, my cousin. He lives in Downey. He loves Pokemon. He's 19. He loves Pokemon. He's loved Pokemon all his freaking life. He goes to different uh, swap meets in other cities oh. and buys Pokemon cards, but unopened. And then he flips them online. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's like no excuse. There's kids on YouTube opening Legos. Like you could be making money. If, if there's something that you like, talk about it. Do exactly. something, right? Like there that's the beautiful thing about social media mm-hmm. i mean obviously it's going to take time you're not just going to do it one night but if you take that initiative once you start getting momentum people are going to start recognizing the hustle like oh ding hey this person is doing this and this and when's the best time to start now exactly exactly the best time to start now is now <laughs> yeah exactly not yesterday because yesterday's time is 
uh, you know, you can't get that back. And not tomorrow because you're never going to start it. And tomorrow's never promised. Mm -hmm. yeah. So start your uh, side hustles today. Start your projects today because you never know what can come out of it. I do want to talk about budgeting, uh, student loans, yeah. uh, a little bit. Uh, student loans, that. Student, <laughs> student loans because you took that deep breath. Yeah. It's because obviously people who have been following my journey know that student loan is a burden for everybody. Student yeah. loan repayment uh, at the time of this recording is September 16th, but at the time of release, it's going to be somewhere in October, November. So that means the student loan payments have already started. Interest rates have already started accumulating as of September. I was a person who started off back in 2018 when I finally started paying my student loans with $82,000 in student loans. At the time, I had about 51,000. So about, I paid about $31,000 in student loans in the past three years that we've been on a student loan pause interest rate because I knew interest rates were going to kill me in yeah. the long run. So I started putting money in and trying to take advantage of the no pause. Why? Because even though I was faithful in the homie Biden, <laughs> Biden did not shoot through and come through with, with the 20,000 forgiveness. Yeah, and I'm yeah. so mad at myself for, for thinking that somebody else could handle my problems. Right. Yeah. What, what's the interest rate on your loans? Uh, one of them is 5.9, the other one's 5.5, .5, and then the last one is 3.1. Uh, so the 3.1 is $5,000. I'm not even paying that one. Yeah. I'm doing my minimum payment. And then on the one that's 5.9, because I'm doing the avalanche method. So I'm trying to tackle yeah. the one with the highest interest rate. And that one I have 24000 So I'm paying, uh, obviously, my monthly payment is like 150 bucks but that monthly payment gets distributed in amongst mm, the three yeah. right so i'm putting an extra 500 dollars a month on uh on on one of the student loans to pay that down yeah. so then once that one's done guess what those extra 500 are probably gonna yeah. go to the next one now at the same time that that's happening i got my car and it's like <laughs> once yeah. i'm done paying that that money is gonna go yeah. straight into the student loan it's gonna be like a quick way to little by little yeah but the good thing is that you're still investing right yes. regardless it's important to invest because it's a compound effect like a snowball right but the opposite the more money the more time you have in the market or in your investments the more time it has to grow and compound and so many people and i've had this conversation with my cousins why don't you just stop investing why don't you sell your stocks <laughs> and pay off all your debt because I have the money to do so and whatnot. But I'm like, in the long term, I know psychologically, yeah. in the short term, psychologically, You'll it's going to make me feel yeah. good, which is great. But in the long run, it's going to make me feel horrible because I'm going to miss out on so much uh, capital gains or yeah. on dividends, dividends more than anything. And I'm like, uh, I'd rather prolong my process because I've already calculated like, oh, interest <laughs> rate, how much yeah, I yeah, pay yeah. for it versus how much I'd make in dividends. I'd be making way more in dividends. But strategy to get more money is to pay down your debt yeah so if you have credit card debt pay it off yeah then you're gonna have more leverage to do stuff yeah because once you get all that debt off i mean that's more money that you have in order to invest right so any anything that you can do to get more money do it again the power of social media you could start something right now um, start talking about it let it grow um, again, buying things, go to garage sales, flip stuff, and don't be afraid to look up the item right then and there, you know? Mm -hmm. I know when I first started and I was at Ross, the security would pass, pass by, and sometimes I would be kind of scared, but I'm just on my phone. I was looking at the shoes. I was making sure that, okay, is this shoe, like, has it been sold recently? How much money can I make off it? I was doing all that, so I was in the store for, like, an hour or two hours, I guess, just digging through stuff, yeah. but, um, you know, take the initiative, do do something and if you want to buy equipment because you want to start like a youtube channel or you want to start something in order to like uh expose yourself more in social media and whatnot obviously the best way to start is on your phone yep. yeah but once you want to once you uh start buying equipment like i have a camera i obviously have this mic with the logo and challenge make sure to subscribe to the channel and listen to the podcast on apple and spotify uh you know, there's things like OfferUp to save you a couple hundred yeah. bucks on items. 
That way you don't have to pay full retail price. But if you do have to pay full retail price, because that makes you a lot more comfortable, if you go to stores like Best Buy, just remember Best Buy price matches. Price, price matches. matches, yeah. I did that for these cameras. They were uh, like, let's say, $1,500 at, at, um, at Best Buy. But on Amazon, they were 1200 Yeah, just make sure that on Amazon that it's shipped and sold. By or Amazon. Yeah, by Amazon, and you should be good. But yeah, a lot of people don't even know that, that Amazon, uh, I mean, Amazon Best Buy price matches. Yeah, and so many other stores price match. And it's funny because when I first started doing it, I was like, fuck, people in the back are probably like, this fucking cheap ass. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't hey, give okay, a fuck. Well, like, it's your money. For all price, exactly. right? Um, but, you know, we're sharing resources and tips uh, in order to save more money and keep more money in your pocket. So paying down your debts is, de debts is definitely one of them. Budgeting wise, if you want to go super old school, Excel. Yeah, Excel, pen and paper, do whatever you can. But I think for sure, having something to track your money is going to go a long way because you can you can see it, right? If you can see it, it makes it easier rather than trying to do it in your head like, oh, yeah, I spent this. I just bought this. So make sure you have something. Uh, me, I like using apps, right? I know when I first started, I would use um, Mint, Mint, right? Because I could categorize it. It gives me nice charts and everything. It's sponsored. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, referral code or something exactly. but uh yeah that's the one that i use what, what about yourself it's funny i started using mint about seven years ago as well um when i was like looking at budgeting tools it's one of the, i, I want to say it's one of the first ones it's uh was bought out by intuit yeah intuit intuit yeah. bought it uh so it was just mint less so i was before intuit <laughs> you know uh, but yeah, I put my credit cards in there. I put my student loans. I put my bank accounts. I put my uh, my investment accounts, whether that be 401k, IRAs, Robinhood, etc. But it all puts it into one category, and even yeah. your house, like your mortgage. Yeah. It'll tell you, hey, and then it'll give you a number, like, hey, this is your net worth, yeah, because of everything that you have your assets so for example the house even though I'm under my parents names right <laughs> <laughs> but like the house it shows you right there but it i just put it in there and made. yeah you you mentioned net worth can you explain that a net worth bit? that's basically all your assets minus your liability so how much money you have whether it be in cash or uh in assets yeah basically like a home yeah. a car right versus your liability credit card debt uh, and loans, student yeah, loans. Everything that you owe. Yeah, so if I have $100,000 in my bank account, but I have $80,000 that I owe to someone, my net worth, I'm only worth 20K. Yep. Right? But if I have a house that's worth 500,000, I have 100,000 in my bank account, $80,000 like, that I owe, whether it be student loans or credit cards, I am worth 520,000. Yep. And that it's important that you invest even when you have, you know, debt and stuff because you want your net worth to grow. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah, I mean it's good if let's say you you pay off all you're doing is your credit card debt and let's say it takes you 5 years, 10 years. At the end of that, you pay off all your debt, but you have no assets or anything and you're already 10 years behind, yeah. 5 years behind. You know, you have no investments. Now you got to start at zero, right? And that's going to take you a lot more time in order to have your money grow. Yep, 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 yep. So make sure you constantly increase your net worth. But in terms of saving money, if you want to save a quick $1,000 or if you want to save a quick $10,000 because you have the capability, we're going to go ahead and talk about these two uh, really basic strategies that uh, you can find them on social media, Googling it, but it is the one year savings challenge. Yeah, that I, when you showed me that, I was like, dang, this is pretty smart, yeah. right? I, I didn't think about it, you know, because the way I would do it is I would just have, you know, a certain percentage. Again, how we talked about in previous episodes, automate it, right? Just have it and forget it. Um, but this one right here, it, it's if you're more aggressive and you're on top of it, I think it's a great way to save you yeah. know a decent amount of money so for so many people in la it's probably hard and i've heard all the time in the radio like it's hard for me to take my family to disneyland because we're oh. a family of four yeah. and it's about a thousand dollars and whatnot and let's say you already want to start planning for disneyland a year from now or the beginning of the year because we're going to do the christmas disneyland trip but i need a thousand dollars how do i save a thousand dollars because i personally don't know how to well there's the one year savings challenge so that means you start off week one 
of the year, which is January 1st through January 7th or whatever that is, uh, because you know how it changes. And that week, you save $1. Week two, you save $2. Week three, you save $3. And obviously the first half of the year is gonna be super easy because you're saving $15, $20. But then when you get to like week 51, you yeah. have to save $51 that week. On yeah. week 52, $52 that week. And yeah. by the end of the full year, you're going to have $1,378. Yep. Saved in your bank account. And if you put that in a high yield savings account, you have a little bit extra. Remember, keep it separated and you'll be good to go. Yup. There's also now a thousand dollars. All right, cool, that's easy. What if you want a ten thousand dollars? There's another strategy for that. Do you do you do you know do you want me to explain? Yeah, you explain this one since you're the one who introduced me to it. I mean, like, dude. Right, so if you want to save ten thousand dollars and you're like, how the hell? That's a, that's a lot of money. All right, and I have it here in a, in a notepad <laughs> because if not, I'm gonna say it wrong. So this is what you're gonna do from week. You start off again. It's a whole year challenge, but you start off week one all the way to there's 52 weeks. But from week one to week 49, this is what you're gonna do. Uh, the week one is $125, week two, $150, week three, $175, week four, you'd assume 200, but no, week four, and it's gonna be the same thing. Week four, you're gonna save $300, and you repeat that again. Week one, 125, week two, 150, week three, 175, week four, $300, and you repeat that every four week cycle. Now, the last four weeks, so the month of December, this is where things get a little bit a little bit different. Week 49, which is the first week of December, $200. Week four, 50, 225. Week 51, 250. And then week 52, 225. And you should have $10,000 by the end of the year. Dang. So like if someone wanted to, you know, get this kind of breakdown, what, what would they Google or what would they like? Yeah, just in? put the $10,000 uh, year challenge or the $1,000 year challenge and obviously all these numbers you can modify them yourself if you wanted you know I want to save $2,000 just increase it by a dollar if you want to save a hundred thousand dollars because you have the capability add a damn zero Jeez, yeah <laughs> you know? it must be nice <laughs> oh man that you could do that but these are all little tips that we're giving you here because we want you to keep as much money in your pocket and if to recap everything Side hustle. Yep. Get started now. Whatever it is, find something that you enjoy or even something that you do for work. If you're a mechanic, I don't know, whatever you're doing, you cut hair, do something on the side in order to generate more income. I used to flip shoes. I'm pretty sure you guys could do that too. It doesn't take rocket science, nothing like that. Do something now in order to make more money. Tip number two would be to lower your debt. So pay off your credit cards, pay off your loans. And then tip number three would be have fun with it and do a strategy, a uh, year challenge with your friends, with your family members. But the point is to get started and start saving that money in a high yield savings account, yeah. preferably. Yeah, make sure you guys took notes on all the other episodes. And if you haven't listened to them, go check them out, right? There's a lot of information there. And then again, if you have any questions or want us to elaborate a little bit more, feel free to reach out. Um, and you know, we'll get back to you guys. There's no gatekeeping here, right? We try to keep all the information. We try to share everything. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what we're here for. Yep. 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 As Eddie said, uh, check out the other episodes, obviously subscribe. We're trying to grow this channel. We're trying to be as transparent. And it was funny because I was talking to Eddie about my mission statement because it was really hard to try to figure out what this podcast is because it, in the beginning, when I started, it was like, Oh, echando le ganas a la vida, la, Latino stories and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, storytelling is part of it, but I think I narrowed it down and this is my mission statement. And for the first time, I'm going to be sharing it with y'all. So here it is. Ever since I can remember, my mom always said, Echale mijo que tu puedes. So that always stuck with me. So join me on this podcast for a dose of motivation, laughter, and knowledge as we all learn how to keep echandole ganas at this thing called life. So yes, echandole Ooh. ganas at life, whether it be via motivation, whether it be stories, whether it be you acquiring knowledge from any of our guests. Eddie, where can people find you? 
You can find me on all social media platforms at Eddie the Hustler. Um, and again, if you have any questions or want to pick my brain or anything, feel free to reach out, send me a DM, send me a message. You know, I'm here for you. Listen to the other podcast episodes. Subscribe on YouTube. Gracias.